Is it magnitude four earthquake? Oh, okay. That's why it doesn't freaking matter. It's only a four. <laughs> Yes, it rocks the Bay Area, San Francisco today. A magnitude 4 earthquake rattled the San Francisco Bay Area before dawn Tuesday, though no damage or injuries were reported. Isn't that like a regular Tuesday there? <laughs> well, the U.S. Geological Survey said the quake struck at 2.41 a.m. Pacific time. It was centered two miles northeast of Fremont in Alameda County City. Of more than 220,000 people, 30 miles south of what, southeast, I should say, of San Francisco. A magnitude 2.7 aftershock followed 15 minutes after the quake. Then several smaller aftershocks rolled through the area. Commuter rail service was delayed for about 20 minutes in the morning rush while Bay Area Rapid Transit officials inspected tracks for possible damage. They said in a tweet, the 15 to 20 minute average delays system wide may be longer or shorter depending on the line. We're expecting tracks uh, due to the quake. Please be, or inspecting tracks, I should say, due to the quake. Please be patient. Uh, we felt it. Lots of calls coming in from nervous and scared residents, but no reports of damage at this time, the Fremont Police Department tweeted. Fremont Fire Dispatcher told us that the city received no calls during the quake. The rolling sensation of the quake was strong enough to wake residents and set dogs barking in San Fran, but it did not hit with the strong impact that rattled the region in August with the magnitude 6 yeah, from South Napa, which hit, of course, on August 24th, centered less than 70 miles from Fremont. It did kill one person, injured 200, and caused $400 million out of Arnold Schwarzenegger's pocket. <laughs> Now, Fremont is at the southern end of the Hayward Fault, which saw its most serious quake back in 1868. Although its magnitude isn't known, that quake killed 30 people and was known as the Great San Francisco Earthquake until the iconic magnitude 7.9 quake along the San Andreas Fault in 1906. We all remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> yeah that, was, that was a bitch, that one. Yes. <laughs> Well, gang, we're going to go for that second commercial break. But don't worry, when we come back, we got all sorts of debauchery and, and, and disgusting sex positions. And, <laughs> hey, yeah, it's, it's balls to the wind on this Monday show. Yes. That's right. We're just uh, shaving them off, letting them loose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you, you shave, Gilbert, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. See? Now everybody knows that Gilbert Godfrey shaves his balls. <laughs> and, and and right there, I think that yes. that's way more important than the tongue rolling thing. Yes, <laughs> it is. Anyway, gang, we'll be back in two. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread, then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the best worst part was the shower. My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Let's do a brand new day. Let's step away from the bland and let the color fly. Let's get to the one store with more number one choices and match this or this without using too much of this. Then, let's crack open a can and get to it. Paint? No. Let's do POW. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Glidden Duo starts at a new lower price of $25.46 a gallon. Glasses. 
White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. On Twitter, at Real Gilbert, ACP. <laughs> well, well, thanks for, for bringing that in there. That was uh, yes. very, yes. Impo- <laughs> very important. Yeah, that's awesome. How about... Uh, how about your Cary Grant uh, doing the Jewish canter? How about... Hey, you two Jews! Hey, you Cary Grant! Uh, uh, that's a canter. Yeah, that's... Hey, you two Jews! Hey, you... Michigan! That's a Oh, well, you know when when I when I when I said do Cary Grant uh, canting? Yes. You know you, you didn't have to actually say Cary Grant canting. Yes. <laughs> you know. See, I think the folks got that from when I said do Cary Grant canting. You know. <laughs> Mr. T would be proud of you. Well, uh, damn well he should. I'm white. <laughs> yeah. You would have loved the guy. Never drank. Never smoked. Did drugs. Nothing. He had only one obsession. Women. That was the women. That's right. He just, he just pitied the fool, and yeah. If uh, you think that you were clever with women, he wouldn't stand a candle with this guy. No. So Muhammad Ali was another one with women. I did two films with him. Yeah. Uh, he, he, we were walking. To, we were doing a, a big boxing movie uh, uh, with two or three hundred people in the stand, and he walked in and uh, had uh, beside him stood his uh, macho honcho. And those were all the Muslims in those days. They had those little thin ties and suits. Yeah, yeah. And he would point at the female. And he went and got him and gave him a note. And every 20, 30 minutes, they would go into the dressing room. But they were only talking about negotiations, I'm sure. Right? Oh, yeah. It's all about the business, yeah. It's all about the business, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Gilbert, uh, yes. we, we've actually got requests. They want your Jay Leno. Someone uh, rent somewhere that you want for dick. Uh, can you show it to me? <laughs> <laughs> now, welcome back to the Big Show. Of course, your coffee and cigarettes Monday Mocha on HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. And you know you can get all that HTLA has to offer unzipped, opened up, spread out. Yes, <laughs> And completely shave. <laughs> yes, you can take a look at that pink over at New York's Best Talk.com. <laughs> and if you go to the show page right now, yes. that's right, right now, live. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you get yourself over there, New York's Best Talk.com. Get over there live. Hit that show page. You're going to be in there. You're going to. There's the the chat room. People exchanging naked photos. <laughs> it's, uh... Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. That's right, but it's a tip we'd like to explore. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the sex. <laughs> Right. I lived in I lived in Greenwich Village for a while when I first started as an actor. Yeah, but that was uh, geez, 1962. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody from the old neighborhood would remember you. <laughs> no. I nearly got kicked out of a theater. I went. To, I can't remember what I saw about two weeks ago because I was booing and screaming. Yeah, yeah, that'll happen, especially if you're carrying a gun and a grenade. <laughs> We we're five steps away from winning the Academy Award. Yeah, yeah, and we didn't. No, well, it's okay. And, and uh, the 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 thing you have to remember, Louis, is that you've been nominated thirty five times. That's the important thing. Yes, you know. You think of old Gilbert here. He hasn't even seen the Academy Awards. <laughs> you know. No, I don't, because I asked him, I said, well, fly out here and I'll film you. Yeah, Gilbert will never let you film him. <laughs> no, it won't happen. That's why even to get him on this show, you know, he he stays in his apartment down the street. He doesn't come down to the studio here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's, personally, I'm, I have some ideas about that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that, uh, well, I'm just going to say it. You know, I, I think that my voice is so damn good on the air that he's actually sitting there right now masturbating. <laughs> and... Uh, 
course, and, uh, and I've always admired Gilbert. Uh, yes. You know the way you masturbate, and there's no heavy breathing. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's that's pretty good. Uh, pop quiz, Seinfeld. Hey, can I see your dick? There you go. <laughs> See, well, maybe he's not masturbating because I don't know. How do you how do you drop your dick and do Seinfeld in an instant? How do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> no, Frank and I were talking that your mother yeah. was in a movie. Yes, we've covered this. Bride of Frankenstein. Yes, it's all over that. You, you know, you keep bringing that up. You should bloody apologize. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Uh-huh. What is my name? No, I'm not saying it again. <laughs> no. Always when always with a female having a relationship, married or single. Yeah. It's always better that they do the leaving. Right. <laughs> if you do the leaving, it can take that lingering thing. You know what I mean? Yes, and hell we wouldn't want to linger, would we? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, about, it's about fucking time. Move on. <clears throat> move on. All right. <laughs> All right, well, moving on today, we got lots of stories to cover, and uh, hey, get ready for this. This, geez, I don't know why this is back here. This should be right up front of the tongue rolling thing. <laughs> That's right. Get ready for, uh, yeah, believe it or not, ads on the moon. <laughs> well, most people outside of Asia are unfamiliar with a Kari Sweet, a Japanese sports drink that tastes like Gatorade and resembles, well, because they're Japanese, human sweat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, that might change when Picari Sweat becomes the first product advertised on the surface of the moon. <laughs> the music is fantastic. Oh, yeah? Oh, you got to hear it. You, you, you like the moon music, do you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wait a minute, I got lost. H-T-L-A. Yeah, no, you're in the right place. <laughs> you are. <clears throat> well, in the latter half of 2016, an American film devoted to space exploration, SpaceX, or an American firm, actually, not a film. <laughs> SpaceX plans to land a rover on the moon. Among the rover's cargo, a can of Picari sweat which will be left on the lunar plane near a giant crater named Berg. (laughs) Well, the goal, as stated by Picari Sweat, is for modern-day children to someday become astronauts and eventually drink, ew, its contents. (laughs) Well, now brace yourself for the era of lunar advertising. Picari Sweat's grandiose stunt is likely to become a trend, not an anomaly, as Picard would say. (laughs) Damn it, Mr. Data, it's an anomaly. <laughs> Wesley, come to my ready room. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> well, the U.S. firm designing the rover that will plop the Picari sweat can onto the moon expects more advertising dollars coming. Yes, that's right. The firm Astrobiotic tells us that the ads probably won't be the driving force funding non-government space projects, but they're open to offering numerous opportunities for marketing on the moon, from corporate sponsorship, educational and inspirational marketing opportunities. Here's everything you need to know about the dawn of the lunar advertising era. (laughs) That's right. Did you know advertising on the moon is cheaper than you might think? Yeah. Yeah. The exact cost of Picari Sweat's moon ad has been kept secret. Astrobiotic has signed non-disclosure agreements and will reveal the price, but a a Pennsylvania-based firm, Ballpark Fees, are public. They charge as little as $1.2 million for a kilo of cargo delivered to the moon. Picari Sweat's parent company, Otsuka. Well, they likely paid much more than that for the ad. They also had to hire a Singaporean firm, Astroscale, to design a custom Picari sweat can that can withstand the rigors of space travel. But it's doubtful the cost of dropping that can on the moon will reach $8 million, the cost of a single minute of advertising during the Super Bowl. To give you a little comparison. Yes. <laughs> Well, this Picari sweat can is missing a crucial ingredient, though, of course, and that would be moon water. Yes, the moon-bound Picari sweat isn't liquid. It's a powder-like Kool-Aid or Tang. 
To fulfill Picari Sweat's goal, in which a future astronaut drinks the can's contents, scientists will first need to figure out how to extract... Are, are, you, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> 2015, yes. all our technical advancements, yes. you know, we, we're, we're paying a Russian taxi fare to the International Space Station. Yes. <laughs> and now we're figuring out how to put water to go up and mix with the sweat from Singapore on the moon. <laughs> you know, this, this, ladies and gentlemen, is evidence of why our species needs to be extinct. <laughs> That's it. And that's it for the story, too. I ain't reading anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, it goes on for about another six paragraphs, as many of the stories that Kissy prepares for us. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but we're, we're we're not going there. I think it should be short and sweet. No, no, it's it's Picari Sweat, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to... Uh, mm. Gotta, sorry, I had to clear that sweat out of my mouth with some Tim Hortons dark. Yeah. Mm. Well, moving on, surveillance emerges and an, as an issue, of course, in the presidential race coming up for 2016. In Washington today, the debate over government surveillance is emerging for the first time in recent years as a significant issue in the presidential race. Blurring party lines as candidates such as Rand Paul and Bernie Sanders go after many of the same independent-minded voters worried about government spying. The 2016 presidential race is the first to be held in the wake of the 2013 revelations by a former National Security Agency contractor, Edward Snowden, that the agency engaged in a mass collection of phone metadata for millions of Americans not suspected of any terrorist activity. Analysts say the surveillance issue is a way for candidates to distinguish themselves from one another, especially in the crowded GOP primary debates. Well, I guess it's crowded down below. Uh, Donald Trump isn't crowded. <laughs> Uh, where it separates a privacy rights proponents such as Paul, a Kentucky senator, and Texas Senator Ted Cruz from security hawks such as New Jersey government Governor Chris Christie and Florida Senator Marco Rubio. It's also a way for Sandersto to set himself apart from more than the hawkish Hillary Clinton in the Democratic primary, analysts say. The Snowden revelations give the candidates something to talk about that they couldn't talk about before, either because they didn't know about it or because it was classified and couldn't be discussed, says Gregory Nojum, a senior counsel for the Nonpartisan Center for Democracy and Technology. In the aftermath of Snowden, we're finally getting a real debate over the Constitution, he says. The debate comes at a time when Congress is increasingly struggling with the balance between civil liberties and homeland security. Lawmakers voted earlier this year to end NSA phone data programs as libertarians, some Tea Party conservatives, and liberal Democrats united to force changes to the Patriot Act. More recently, privacy advocates have held up Senate passage of a cybersecurity bill that civil liberties groups warn could lead to more government surveillance. Libertarians like Paul and progressives like Sanders very, have very similar takes on the need for privacy rights, says Daryl West, founding director of the Center for Technology Innovation in, at Brookings Institution. Brookings Institution. Yes. Uh, isn't that that mental home up in central New York State? <laughs> Now, well, it's the politics of strange bedfellows. Mainstream Democrats and conservatives are less likely to share their fears because they see the world as being dangerous and the U.S. is needing to engage in surveillance. The recent GOP presidential debate showed just how heated that fight can get. Well, no, it didn't. It was all about uh, Trump and that woman from Fox. <laughs> Well, in a testy exchange, Christie accused Paul of endangering national security by pushing to end the NSA's mass phone data collection program. Paul said Christie would sacrifice the Bill of Rights by continuing the warrantless surveillance of most citizens. Democrats have not yet had a debate, but the issue is likely to emerge when they do, West said. Sanders, while serving in the House, voted against the Patriot Act anti-terrorism law that was rushed through Congress and passed on October 1st, 2001, a month after 9-11 terrorist attacks. Clinton, who was a senator from New York at the time, joined with 98 other senators to pass the law, which the government later used as justification 
for the mass collection of Americans' phone data and other controversial surveillance programs. That clearly is going to be a big point of contention when they get a chance to debate, West said, but as far as Scooby-Doo matters, they don't care. <laughs> Well, beyond the competition with members of their own parties, Paul and Sanders could find themselves competing with each other to try and attract independent voters to their respective parties, all 3% of them. <laughs> <laughs> now, states with open primaries allow independents to vote in either Republican or Democratic contests. About half of young millennial voters identify themselves as independent or they're more distrustful of government surveillance than older Americans, according to surveys by the Pew Research Center. The issue is likely to heat up this year or in early 2016 when the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board, an independent agency within the executive branch that was created following a recommendation by the 9-11 Commission, it is expected to come out with a report about sweeping government surveillance powers authorized by the Executive Order 12333, says Julian Sanchez, an expert on surveillance issues at Cato Institute. Critics say the order issued by President Reagan back in 1981... <laughs> And updated by President Bush in 2008 before he walked into a wall. <laughs> well, it allows the NSA to engage in a warrantless collection of storage of actual audio content of phone calls made by foreign nationals overseas, even if those calls involve innocent Americans living in the United States. Critics say it's worse than the NSA program that Congress just uh, eliminated because the program only collected data about what phone numbers were called and how long the calls lasted and what time that they were made. It did not include the context or contents of those conversations. The order also has been used to allow the government to collect Americans' emails and texts without a warrant, as long as those emails are collected outside. U.S. Americans' emails are often routed through Internet servers outside the country. I would anticipate that whatever they, the privacy board, have to say is likely to feed into the presidential campaign because these candidates can respond with either, as president, I will vigorously continue the surveillance power, or I will issue a new executive order to restrict what they're doing. At this point, it's hard to say which position will appeal more to voters, analysts say. Part of the answer will depend on how worried Americans are about terrorist threats heading into the election. I think the balance of power between privacy rights and surveillance depends a lot on global events, West said. Every time there's another terrorist attack, people become more open to surveillance. Well, I guess that's why we got Bangkok. Yeah. Moving on today, uh, we got a word here from the lawyer. Witnesses saw a cop high-five a dead teen's body. Yes, the lawyer for the family of Zachary Hammond says he was has uncovered some disturbing police conduct in the aftermath of the unarmed South Carolina teenager's death. In a five-page letter sent to Attorney General Loretta Lynch, the FBI Director James Carney, asking for federal civil rights investigation, Eric Bland writes that a member of a neighboring police force has confirmed to the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division that after an officer shot a teen, Members of the Seneca Police Department lifted his dead hand and high-fived him. <laughs> now, the letter also says that a witness saw an officer remove Hammond's body from his car before retrieving something from a police car. The officer then rolled him over on his side, put something underneath his body, and rolled him back, the letter states. Next, they're going to say, oh, yeah, you rolled him over and he was fucking him. <laughs> Well, Hammond, 19, was shot dead during a drug sting in a Hardee's parking lot July 26th. Police say Hammond drove his car at Lieutenant Mark Tiller in an attempt to run him over. The autopsy shows Hammond was hit in the back and side. In Bland's view, this means Tiller shot from the direction of the side window and was therefore not in the path of the vehicle. Well, well no, he would have jumped aside, tool. <laughs> Hey, well, think about it. If he just stood there, yes. uh, got run over, you know, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll shoot him a couple of times in the head as, he, as he's speeding towards me at 80. Yes. <laughs> and I'll just stand there so that he'll be dead and I'll be really effed up too. That's what we'll do. No, 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 no. You see, police, well, they're trained. <laughs> 
while this may come as a shock to a lot of black folk, yes. <laughs> You know, you, you don't just stand there and, and, you know, have the car bounce off you. Yeah. Okay. You actually step aside, let the thing go by, and then fill the mother fricker with lead. That's what you do. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. There we go. Not in the path of the vehicle. Police dash cam video may show what happened, but police on Friday declined our request to release it under the Freedom of Information Act. The lack of video may be one reason why the case has received less attention than some other recent police shootings, but Bland has repeatedly said that the fact that Hammond is white also plays a role. If Zachary were black, the outpouring of protest and disappointment from the public and press would be amazing, he tells the New York Times. You wouldn't be able to get a hotel room in upstate South Carolina. <laughs> Well, and I mean, as we know, yes. you know, uh, all of these uh, unarmed black folks getting murdered, it, it's all to sell hotel rooms, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, in our final story today, the oldest veteran in America dies, well, I guess it would probably do me in, one month after the President Obama visit. <laughs> yeah. That's right. In Washington, one month ago, Monday, President Obama met with the nation's oldest veteran, a 110-year-old woman from Detroit who joined the Women's Auxiliary Ar Army Corps during World War II at the age of 38. Emma Didlake died Sunday after a sudden illness, the Detroit Free Press reported. Emma Didlake served her country with distinction and honor, a true trailblazer for generations of Americans who have sacrificed so much for their country. President Obama said Monday in a statement through the White House press office, I was humbled and grateful to welcome Emma to the White House last month. And Michelle and I send our deepest condolences to Emma's family and friends and everyone she inspired over her long and quintessentially American life, including HTLA's Brock Favors. <laughs> Well, Didlake visited the White House July 17th, traveling to the nation's capital with support from the Honor Flight Network, a national nonprofit that provides trips for veterans to visit Washington monuments and memorials. In addition to her Oval Office photo op, she also visited a memorial devoted to her hero, yes, the World War II President Franklin Roosevelt. Well, there we go. And that's all we got for you today. That's right. No, there it is, gang. That's right. A boom. It's 5 p.m. Eastern, and it is time for your coffee and cigarettes, your Tuesday espresso. Yes, for the 18th of August, 2015. There it is, right in your basket. Proceed to the checkout aisle. Ten items or less today. That's right, you got tuned to HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk. And yours truly, Chris, the Crash Man Jesus Taylor, sitting in for Chris, the Crash Man Jesus Taylor, on this Tuesday. And wow, what a show do we got. Yes, we do. Yes, today on the big show, we got the story about the second Marine who dies at Camp Lejeune in just two days as a Bangkok official yellow shirt guy is the bomber. That's right, yellow shirt guy. Also today, Muslim Free Gun Store is looking to get kicked in the balls really hard. That's right, they're selling the George Zimmerman Confederate flag prints. Wow, I, I don't even know what the hell that would be. But hey, rape trial targets elite prep schools. Yes. As the, their salute. Yes, that's the, the salute is what's giving them away from being rapists or something. Yeah, whatever. We'll get into it later. Also, we're following other stories today, including a Trump news. Much of the Trump immigration plan is, quote, not that radical, according to GOP circles. And in Iran, death to America doesn't really mean what we think. Ah, all right, sure. Yeah. Durka Durka, Muhammad Jihad. <laughs> Well, we got a full house in the uh, live chat room. Uh, we're banging it here. We got all kinds of workers and stuff uh, all in here. I got wires everywhere upgrading more pre Sonus gear. And uh, we got a show for you. Don't worry, it's coming at you. So, hey, come on in and grab that cup, have a seat, and light one up, gang. It's your coffee time.
there it is. That's the theme we all know and love, of course, your coffee and cigarettes. Yes, for today, Tuesday, the 18th of August, 2015. You know, it's a nice uh, balmy 85 degrees right now in uh, Central Park, and sun is just shining, not a cloud in the sky today. It's a, it's a hell of a nice day, so... If you're in here listening to me, get the hell out there and don't listen to me anymore because it's it's too nice to pass up. You'll be able to listen to me all through winter. That's right. Well, in the boost today, pushing the buttons for us, making the show go, as always, is the one, the only, Kissy Springer. Yeah, she's pushing the buttons on that pre-Sonus 24-4-2 digital broadcast mixer. And hey, if you're looking for anything in audio, whether it be digital or analog, well, you want to go to presonus.com. They've got it going on, and if I sound exceptionally good today, that's because they've got some filters and processors making me sound all radio-like. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but they're in here. Yeah, you might hear them from time to time making me more radio-like, but, uh, yeah, we're going anyway because the uh, boss is too damn cheap to have them come in on the weekend. There you go. Also, this show is brought to you by the fine folks, as always, at Tim Hortons, New York City. Now with those eight fine locations in the city to serve all your coffee and baked goods needs. That's right, Tim Hortons, always fresh. There you go. And uh, what else I got to do? Well, I got to throw out some uh, social media links. That's right, if you're looking for us anywhere, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever the hell it is you're on, just uh, go searching for HTLA Radio 1 New York. You will find us. And, of course, the Mecca, if you will. Yes, the the Muslim holy place of all that is radio you can also find at NewYorksBestTalk.com. There you go. Want to say howdies uh, to uh, lots of shout-outs today, actually. we got lots of stuff going on here. Uh, it, it's too much. I just can't. I just can't keep up with it all. We're we're just gonna fall apart, and yeah, I don't know something. First of all, want to welcome uh, HTLA's first lady, of course, the one, the only Devlon Crawford to the show. She is uh, here and and looking mighty. I don't know, sexual today. I don't, I don't know what the word is, but also Sharon Hunley Chesley, all the way from Texas. That's right, she's our Texas correspondent. Also, we got Phil DeYoung, Grand Rapids, Michigan, with your weather today. And according to Phil. I uh, just uh, checked in with me just a few moments ago, and it's uh, well, 75 and balmy in Grand Rapids today. So there you go. There's that. And then, of course, I did mention to you that Central Park right now, 85 degrees in sun. So uh, as I stated in yesterday's show, eh, it's, about as, uh, <laughs> it's about as close to actual weather as you're going to get here. Of course, after our first commercial break, you're going to uh, hear the one, the only Frankie McDonald, uh, HTLA meteorologist, of course, with his report. But as we all know, that's just so much garbage. And yeah, right. So we'll do our best to keep you updated on the weather as it happens all around the USA. And speaking of all around the USA, there's there's a country around the USA somewhere. Some folks say it's north. Some folks say it's south. But uh, I know it is Canada. And just a few moments ago, that's right, just a few minutes before we actually came on the air, yes, my my sister, well, I got to say sister-in-law, but my cousin-in-law, Sonia Adrian, uh, she just hit me up on Facebook, haven't seen or heard from them in 10 years or more, some bloody thing, but uh, yeah, she's she's tuned in today, and uh, of course, uh, yeah, I could tell you some stories, ah, yes, yes. And uh, I guess to her husband, Tony Adrian, yes, my cousin, uh, <clears throat> brother from another mother, second time removed or some damn thing, uh, he and I were pretty tight for, oh, I don't know, 30 years of our life. And, uh, well, if he's listening today, I've got one word for you, buddy. Blade! There you go. That's right. And and every single listener to this program, whether it's in and around New York City or on the interweebs, you're not going to have a clue what the hell that is. But I'll just say this. Konami Blades. That's right, Blades of Steel. Yes, a little video game made for, made by Konami, I should say, for a, a little video game system. What the hell was it called? The Super Nintendo, I think it was? Or no, 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 it was just the NES. I don't know. Ancient stuff, anyway. <clears throat> yes, so uh, uh, welcome to the show, guys. Great to, to see you and have you here, as always. And uh, yeah, and, and also today, before we get rolling here, actually, I, I should introduce the guest cl- slash co-host. Kissy is uh, waving at me. They, they're on hold. They're on hold. Hurry the hell up. 
So I'll get to that right now. First, coming to us live from the beautiful Mill Bay Film and Television Studios uh, in downtown Mill Bay, British Columbia, Canada, a place that Sonia Adrian knows well. Well, if she remembers from her drunk stupors. Hee, hee, hee. That's right. we got the one and only Louis Lawless, 35-time Academy Award-nominated director, never won a goddamn thing, and he's here with us live. Are you there, Louis? Uh, we, we're five steps away from winning the Academy Award. Yeah. And we didn't. Well, I know that, but it's all good. It's it's okay because, uh, you know, had you actually won, there's no way on God's green earth we would have ever gotten you on this show. Wait a minute, I got yeah. lost. H-T-L-A. Oh, yeah. H-T-L-A. Well, there you go. What the hell is that? Uh, the, the, the beeping thing? Well, that that would be your phone. And uh, Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? <laughs> 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 I'll tell you, you you go right ahead. I'm sure Kissy has got you covered with the button. Uh, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Or not. <laughs> yes, and of course, that is the cackler. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, the one, the only, Gilbert Gottfried, coming to us from about eight blocks down the street here in downtown Manhattan. Uh, Gilbert, I, uh, yes. I see that you... Uh, you, you, you did. Did you actually like my my wrestler introduction? Did yes. you? Yeah? <laughs> it's the cackler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, cackler. So, uh, <laughs> what do you what do you say, cackler? Are you ready to go on the damn show today? What huh? the fuck? Well, I gotta ask. I gotta ask. I'm ready. Yeah, I, I don't believe you. Let's let's hear your intro today. And this is. I f that up. Now, see? <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Yes. It's just, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's well, it's not awful, but, yeah. but just not good. No. No. <laughs> Uh, but that's okay because as long as I have you, yes. I've got everything. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, that, that's all I really need. That was a mistake on my part. Well, you don't have him, so <laughs> so don't worry about it. But welcome, gentlemen, to the big show today. Oh, pop quiz, Seinfeld. Hey, can I see you, Dick? There you go. <laughs> Well, uh, I see, actually, Sonia has made it into the live chat room over there, and, uh, wow, she, she seems to be melding with all the other uh, show haters just fine. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's like, hey, yeah, Sonia, nice to see you. Yeah, I heard you on the radio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, the superstars of Spreaker. Yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome to the show today, guys. Uh, good to have you here, as always. Yes. And uh, let's see, am I forgetting anything? I, 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 I don't know. I got this feeling I'm forgetting something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I am. Thank you for reminding me. Crash Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, we got a little joke today. Yes. Yes, we do. We got this from our listener in uh, Texas. Yes, the, the, the girl who sits on her front porch through the week and, you know, does her thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now she sent uh, she sent this uh, joke in today. Yes, and uh, I'm I'm going to try and uh, read it in the 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 you know the the many varied voices of Crash Jesus, yeah. right? <laughs> and uh, see if we can add some I don't know sizzle to this already phenomenal funny. <laughs> yeah. So she says an 18 year old girl tells her mom that she missed her period for two months. Yes. Well, very worried, the mother goes to the drugstore and buys a pregnancy kit. Yes. Well, the test results show that the girl is pregnant indeed. Shouting, cursing, and crying, the mother says, Who is that pig that did this to you? <laughs> I want to know! <laughs> <clears throat> well, the, the girl picks up the telephone and makes a call. Yes. Well, a half an hour later, a Ferrari stops in front of their house, and a mature, distinguished man with gray hair, impeccably dressed in an Armani suit, steps out of a Ferrari. How these trailer trash would know an Armani suit when they see it, I don't know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> steps out of the Ferrari and enters their house. He sits in the living room with the father and mother and the girl and tells them, Good morning. Your daughter has informed me of the situation. I can't marry her because of my personal family situation, but I'll take charge. 
I will pay all costs and provide for your daughter for the rest of her life. Additionally, if a girl is born, I will bequeath a Ferrari, two retail stores, a townhouse, a beachfront villa, and a $2 million bank account. Sweet deal, huh? Yes. If a boy is born, well, my legacy will be a couple of factories and a $4 million bank account. If it's twins, they will receive a factory and $2 million cash each. However, if there is a miscarriage, what do you suggest I do? Yes. <laughs> well, it's at this point that the father stands up, who had remained silent during the whole thing, holding his shotgun, of course. Yes. <laughs> Well, he places a hand firmly on the man's shoulder, looks him directly in the eyes, and tell him, You gonna try again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there it is. That's the that's the joke. Uh, there you go. Just, just eat it, eat it. How many different families do you have? Well, I tell you, I got a lot of Ferraris. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. So I, I hope I did that uh, joke justice. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm you know with all these idiots in here. Yes. And, uh, literally, like two feet away from my right shoulder, there's there's like more wire than I've seen in my life. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and and so okay, so so you know, I, I said to the CEO this morning, I said, yes. you know, uh, I understand that you 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 don't want to have these guys here, you know, during the weekend because it's triple time and a half, sure. Yes. But uh, can you can you have them come back? Oh, I don't know, nights when we're not working. How about you know? How, how about that? Like, geez, wouldn't that be a good idea? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I got the the talk to the hand thing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't win. Well, hey, I guess it's uh, time to get on to the stories. Uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories, anyway. Uh, okay. Well, you read this one, Louie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you you go right ahead. I'm going to be over here. I'll be over here smoking my brains out and drinking my coffee. Huh? <laughs> All right, fine. You're just going to sit there and not say anything. Yes. <laughs> go ahead and do my damn job. That's right. The second Marine dies at Camp Lejeune in two days. Uh, Corps officials identified a Marine who was pronounced dead after he was found unresponsive in the vicinity of his barracks on Friday at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Yes, Lance Corporal Ricardo Rodriguez Jr., 25, assigned to Foxtrot Company 2nd Battalion, 8th Marines. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. An ar armory custodian was declared dead by medical officials at the Naval Hospital Camp Lejeune at 7.12 a.m. after being discovered unconscious by unit personnel about 90 min minutes earlier. The cause of his death remains under investigation by the Naval uh, Criminal Investigative Service, according to the Marine Corps officials. Rodriguez, who entered active duty January 23, 2012, had just returned uh, in July from a deployment with uh, Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force Crisis Response in Africa. He previously deployed to Afghanistan in 2013. His awards included a Combat Action Ribbon, a Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, and two Sea Service Deployment Ribbons. Rodriguez's death, uh, well, it marks the second fatality at the camp in a two-day period. Last week, Corporal Alexis Aaron Alcraz, 22, with 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, died Thursday after collapsing during a training hike. Alcraz's death is also under investigation. And you can bet your asses, as soon as we have more details on what the hell killed them, uh, we will, of course, bring it right to you. And indeed, uh, which of the aliens did it? You know, <laughs> Yes, and it you know it it is. It's all about the aliens. You yes. know, anytime you got military personnel dying of of strange circumstances, it's the aliens. Yes, <laughs> you know, it is. They get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. <laughs> the aliens or the soldiers? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can you give me any help for twenty five thousand dollars? Oh yeah, because I look like I could do that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Right, go a half an hour. Do I get fifty thousand? Half an hour for fifty grand. What do you think this is? Frickin' American Idol? <laughs> I don't know where you think.
think you are, Louie, but what the hell would you need all that money for anyway? I tried to, I need to try and raise $25,000 to enter in the Academy Awards. Oh, right. And I think it's a fantastic risk because we have a tremendous chance. Two hundred. Uh, there's about 200 members yeah. that vote on it, and they all get, you have to give them a DVD now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so twenty five grand. Uh, yes. Divide that by 200 DVDs. Yes. Uh, Gilbert, you're Jewish. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a hundred and twenty five dollars a DVD, <laughs> and you've you've already made the damn movie, so don't tell us it's for that. Yes. <laughs> well, moving on today, uh, yes, from the story yesterday about the Bangkok bomber. Well, it's official today out of Bangkok. Yes, yellow shirt guy is the bomber. <laughs> Yellow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Kind of reminds me of that Star Trek reference. Yes. You know, the, 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 the red shirt guy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the yellow shirt guy. That's that's who did it. It's not ISIS anymore. Now we have to be afraid of yellow shirts. Yes. <laughs> well, of course, as we reported to you yesterday, Thailand's capital city was rocked by a bomb blast for the second day Tuesday while a manhunt and testified intensified, I should say, for a suspect in Monday's explosion that killed 20 and wounded more than 100. Tuesday's attack resulted in no casualties, however. Officials in Bangkok said the bombs were similar, likely the work of the same perpetrators. A man recorded on surveillance video leaving a backpack under a bench just before Monday's explosion is suspected in the deadly attack at a Hindu shrine in a busy shopping and tourism district. National Police spokesman Prawit Thorsvani... <laughs> released several photos of the men wearing a yellow T-shirt and carrying a backpack. The yellow shirt guy is not just a suspect. He is the bomber, Prawat told the Associated Press. Prawat told the Bangkok Post as well that Tuesday's pipe bomb tossed at a bridge was probably meant to land on a busy platform leading to a pier, he said. The bomb instead hit a pillar and bounced into the canal, sending a large plume of water into the air and many fish. <laughs> Now they're getting that Louisiana redneck fishing thing down there. <laughs> That's right. Come on over here, you Thailanders. We'll teach you how to fish. <laughs> well, Police Chief Sumyat Pum Pum Wang. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Obama. Some yacht Pum Pum Wang told the Post that Tuesday's bomb was much smaller than Monday's bomb at the shrine. The bomb construction was similar, he said. Authorities said that no person or group has uh, as yet claimed responsibility for either blast. Monday's explosion took place just before 7 p.m. local time near the shrine, a Hindu religious site popular with Thai Buddhists and Chinese tourists. Thailand Prime Minister Purath Chan Ocha... <laughs> Yes, Piyuth Chan Ocha described the incident as the worst attack in his nation's history and vowed to find those responsible and cut off their heads. (laughs) Well, there have been minor bombs or just noise, but this time they aimed for innocent lives, he said. Today, they want to destroy our economy and our tourism. Well, BMI Research, a subsidiary of financial information, Information provider the Fitch Group issued a report warning that the attack could stall fragile economic recovery that has been underway in Thailand. Thailand's foreign ministry said 23 countries had issued travel advisories since the bombing, and the Hong Kong government was the toughest, raising its travel alert uh, for Bangkok to Bangkok Red. <laughs> And, of course, Bangkok Red, yes. uh, that uh, means uh, all uh, travelers to avoid non-essential trips. Now, I don't know. You know, if I got $10,000 wrapped up in my trip to Thailand, that's pretty essential to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to run away from some little bomb, you know? I lived in, I lived in Greenwich Village for a while when I first started out as an actor. Uh, I believe uh, you have mentioned that before, Louis. Yes. Yeah. That was a mistake on my part. Well, it's okay. Now we know, and uh, we can carry on with that knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, 
the attack could undermine the recovery in the tourism industry, deepening the country's economic woes, the BMI report said. The attack could also have political implications, given the highly polarized nature of domestic politics in the country. Thai stock shares fell sharply today in the country's currency, the Bacht. Yes, the Bacht fell to its lowest level in six years. Political tensions have increased in recent months, and the ruling junta, which took power in a coup 15 months ago, said elections will be delayed now until 2017. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, in 2016, they're just going to blow stuff up to delay it. Yes. You know. <laughs> oh, well, now we can't have them until 2020. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Now, Thailand's defense minister, Pirwat Wong Swan, said officials had no prior intelligence about the attack. Some terrorism experts said the bombing was likely the result of the country's growing intern- internal strife and not the work of the Islamic State or other international extremists. Mubin Shaka, a terrorist analyst who closely follows Islamic extremists on social media, said that there's been no Internet messages that suggest the bombing was the work of such jihadists it seems internal, he said. Well, you pig, you have not been following me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Crimson Jihad claimed responsibility yesterday. <laughs> yes. well, Deputy government spokesperson Sansard Kinaward said that uh, five Thais who Malaysians, uh, two of them Malaysians, two Chinese mainland nationals, and two people from Hong Kong, hate to break it to you, buddy, but that's six. <laughs> Yes, and eight people of unknown nationality were killed in Monday's attack. British Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond said a female British national living in Hong Kong was also among the dead. Uh, tourists in uh, Bangkok are reacting with mix of concern and, uh, well, skepticism, really, that the deadly bomb blast that killed at least 18 people in the capital August 17th. And, uh, you know, there it is. And, and they've, they've actually got a, a photo print of this uh, yellow shirt guy. <laughs> And I'm trying to make out the logo right on the front. It looks to me, um, yes, yeah, no, it really, it really does. It looks like it says Amazon.com. <laughs> now, so uh, I guess uh, take that from our story yesterday. Yes, uh, the working conditions at Amazon are very dangerous. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you love to do that kind of stuff. You always did. What blowing up ties? <laughs> yeah? I think it should be short and sweet. Well, it's good that you say that, Louis, because uh, we're already six minutes past our commercial time. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to go for that first commercial break. But don't you worry. When we come back, we got uh, more updates about that gun store in Florida we told you about that uh, declared themselves Muslim-free. Yes. Well, now they're just asking for all kinds of kicks in the balls because they're selling George Zimmerman Confederate flags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we got all that and so much more when we come back, gang, back into. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions, abundant with rich, fertile soil? What if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials. 
You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like pie. Yeah, I do. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the but the worst part was the shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towel shower curtain to find that whole vacation, vacation for her. For her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. We're New York's best talk radio, ATLA Radio 1. We hugged in the elevator. Yep. And I still have an erection. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, uh, that may be the case for you, Gilbert. Yes. But yes. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, that, that, that wasn't, it didn't work out that way for me, of course. Yes. Uh, but now, uh, just just a moment ago, Leanne Thomas came into the uh, live chat room. Yes. And now I can say, I do have an erection. There you go. <laughs> That's right, and if you'd like to be a superstar uh, of Spreaker, you can, of course, get on over to Spreaker.com, uh, fill out all the uh, pertinent personal information there, tell the CIA everything about you, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you too, of course, can be a superstar of Spreaker. Yes. <laughs> now. $88,000 a year they make, approximately, average, 80s, let's say. Yeah. And there's a thousand, that's $88 million a year that we're paying as taxpayers. Well, you know, uh, Louis, y- you got to give them at least $88,000 a year to be a superstar of Spreaker. <laughs> you just do. You, 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 you can't not pay them that. That was a mistake on my part. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know. They get f***ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Well, uh, yeah, that, that may be, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true, but uh, we love them, of course. Uh, yes. You know, absolutely. So, uh, there they are. If you'd like to get on over there, get on over to Spreaker.com. Uh, type in HTLA Radio 1, and you'll find it. Get in there. Do it. And speaking of social media, Gilbert, what's your Twitter? On Twitter, yeah. at RealGilbertACP. There you go. And uh, Instagram? And on Instagram. Yeah. Gilbert Pod Free. There we go. P O D. Yeah. F R I E D. Yeah, right. You see, it's kind of a pun on the last name. Yeah. Ah, never mind. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well. Thank you for that. You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Yeah, uh, Gilbert's actually my accountant. <laughs> uh, you. You go see him about that. Mr. T would be proud of you. I know, I know, and it's just because I'm white, Louie. Uh... <laughs> I ain't getting no chances. <laughs> don't you give me that milk, Hannibal. Yes. <laughs> I don't know, was was that uh, was was that good? No. Well, it's not awful, but no? but just not good. Okay. <laughs> You being Catholic, you realize that you can't have birth control. You realize that? Uh, yeah, Louis, but uh, I've said many times to you, sir, uh, it just feels weird. Okay? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just... <laughs> well, and actually, hey, you know what, Gilbert? Um, yes. I, I think uh, in honor of Leon Thomas uh, rejoining the uh, the gang, as it were. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, my, my long-lost uh, cousin-in-law, sister-in-law, g- girl thingy there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Ness. Uh, I, th- I think you should dedicate, uh, do a song uh, for them uh, both, uh, dedicate it to Leanne and Sonia. Yes. And uh, I'll let you take it away before we get to uh, Brock Favors with your HTLA traffic. Go ahead, Gilbert. Take me to your heart. Show me where to start. Let me play the part of your first love. All the stars are right. Let us make a wish tonight, my love. Pity those who wait. (laughs) Trust in love to fate. Uh. Finding out too late that they've lost it. There you go. Never let it go. You will never know the ways of love. Ah, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. So that's just for you two ladies. Uh, Hope you enjoy it. Oh, Uh, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) What is my name? Uh, Never mind. Never mind. Well, you do have to move on today, but before we do, pop quiz Seinfeld. Hey, can I see you, Dick? There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd like to welcome the one, the only, Greg Howe, all the way from the nether regions of Canada as well. Yes. <laughs> and you're, you're just in time, sir. We're just back from the first break, and yes, we do have it for you. Brock Favors up in HTLA Chopper 1 uh, with your weather. Uh, no, God, I keep... Uh, <laughs> It's just because I know he's coming. Yes. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of like that 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 scene in in Lord of the Rings when the eye of Sauron was. You know, you're all standing there with your swords and shields, going, "This guy's gonna eat us." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and yes, Stacy. Of course, you are unblocked. Absolutely. How the hell am I going to do the weather without Frankie? Otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, moving on, of course, we do have Brock Favors, uh, HTLA Chopper 1, with your traffic. Brock, take it away. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brock Favors with Traffic on the Ones. Chad Armstrong is out sick today, so I am filling in for my usual land reports, and uh, I'm up here at the chopper, but I got to tell you guys, I am loving the view. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, oh, no, stop, 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 stop. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we are um uh we are over the tent and it's massively clogged down there like a pint of maple syrup on a cool November morning. And we do. Oh, oh God damn! We're gonna die in this mother. Oh, oh, oh my God! Woo! 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, I am uh, I am very sorry, folks. <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride up here. We are now approaching the 405, uh, where the left lane is blocked by a mattress. So somebody is uh, going to be doing a little return to Ikea later today. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, please! Oh, God damn! Oh, get me out this motherfucking death machine right now! Oh, no, black people ain't meant to be in the sky! We ain't meant to be in the sky! Academy Award, and we didn't. Louie, you heartless bastard. Brock just died. <laughs> My God, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, uh, our condolences uh, from all of us at HTLA go out to the Favors family. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, well, he needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, he'll get it at the funeral. I'll bring extra flowers. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 
And it was Brock Flowers with your... <laughs> Right now, Brock favors uh, with your HTLA traffic for it appears Los Angeles. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And, you know, uh, no other radio station in New York, of course, or or really anywhere except for maybe LA, will bring you the Los Angeles traffic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but rest assured, we do. That's that's what we do here. We bring you all sorts of information you don't need. <laughs> that's right. Now, uh, now, here's a segue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, still waiting. I remember uh, being on your radio show in Chicago. <sighs> right, but uh, the, the segue to what, though? You know? Yeah, and, and I remember we, we yeah. hung out afterwards and had a wild time. Yeah, th- this, this guy, Gilbert Godfrey here, ladies and gentlemen, won a powerhouse party animal. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, he just doesn't quit. Like I say, you know, uh, what was it? Four in the morning, uh, Saturday morning. Yes. Yeah, you were just right after. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So can I go? Are you going to tell a story, or am I going to go on now? And I remember too. Yeah. Okay. When we were in the alleyway, pants uh, zipped up. Um, <clears throat> there was this one, you know, sleazy-looking guy who walked by, who was staring at us. Yeah. And you turned around, and, yeah, I mean, he was a, what? What? What's your problem? <laughs> and you said, like, you don't give a shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I don't know why you, 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 you why, do, why do you bring that up? I mean, so what? Yeah. Uh, why, why, why am I going to care about some dude in the alley? I that mean, was a mistake I, on my part. Okay. All right. <laughs> Was was Louie there? I'm... And and I remember, yeah. and this is why I feel I have a real connection with you, because in the alleyway, yeah. I, when that's when that's the beginning, <laughs> <laughs> she she <laughs> bent over it in the alleyway, and you inserted yourself, yeah. and and then she started to blow me, and my erection was kind of. A semi erection because I kept looking at you. So when when you when you're standing there, yeah. trying to get a blowjob and looking at it's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then I remember <laughs> uh, I had a hotel room, of course. So we both went up there. Yeah. And you went first. <laughs> Oh boy! You are my opening act. No, I'm. I'm not even going there. I was your hero. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, we're, we're just gonna stay right there. Now, right. here's a story I'm sure you're tired of talking about. Uh, but we gotta. I'd be remiss in not bringing it up, and that's when you beat up a transvestite. Uh yeah, we we could do that, or you know, we could go to Frankie and the Weather and get the Christ out of the way. <laughs> Yes, that sigh was brought to you by Tim Hortons, New York City. (laughs) That's right. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on on the show? You haven't learned yet? (laughs) Come on. I'd like to have that as my slogan in life. (laughs) Yes, Gilbert, can I cuss Godfrey? There you go. There he is. (laughs) Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Well, stop having it, Louie. Yeah. (laughs) Moving on today, a story we told you about last month, uh, the, but that Florida gun o- store owner, of course, being sued for declaring a Muslim free zone. Well, he's now selling prints of a Confederate flag painted by George Zimmerman. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Zimmerman, who was uh, found not guilty of murder in the shooting death of Trayvon uh, Skittles Martin. <laughs> Back in 2013, paints Confederate flags when he heard the gun store owner, Andy Hallinan, was being sued by the Florida chapter of the Council of American Islamic Relations, according to a statement by Florida Gun Supplies website. The prints are about $50 each, and they are all signed by Zimmerman. Anyone who buys one will be entered 50 times in a free drawing to win the original painting. Yeah. <laughs> 
I just see them up at the New York uh, the art galleries here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and what is this collection? Oh, it's a Zimmerman. <laughs> Well, Florida Gun Supply posted a mini documentary explaining the reason for selling the prints, saying that the store is fighting back against the cultural cleansing of American history. They're starting with the Confederate flag, but then they're going to remove statues, rename schools, rename streets, and try to cleanse the history in America, Helen Ann said in the video. And he's not goddamn taking it anymore. <laughs> Another fine Tim Horton side. There you go. Well, much of the video blames new news media for creating fear and dividing the American public. Helen Ann cites Zimmerman's case to claim self-defense in 2012 after he shot Trayvon Martin, an unarmed African-American teenager. Yes. Yes, as an example of skewed media coverage, mass media intentionally incited hatred and race when the entire issue wasn't about race in the first place, Helen Ann said. In the video, Zimmerman said that he contacted Helen Ann after the gun store owner gained media attention for publishing a video online that said he would no longer serve Muslim customers following a, shoot a, a shooting in Chattanooga, Tennessee that left five service members dead. The gunman, 24-year-old Mahmoud Abdulaziz, <laughs> yes, uh, of course, Duh. was Muslim. <laughs> yeah. Well, Zimmerman painted the Confederate flag in Helen Ann's honor to help him raise money for legal fees, according to the video. A statement on the store's website says that they plan to split the proceeds. The Confederate flag print exposes the twin evils of racism and Islamophobia, CAIR spokesman Ibrahim Hooper told. Our network. I think it's just a clear indication of the overlap between traditional racism targeting African Americans in the form of a Confederate flag and Islamophobia, he said. CAIR identifies itself as the nation's largest Muslim civil rights advocacy organization. In January, the group appealed to the United Arab Emirates to be removed from that nation's list of designated terrorist groups. <laughs> The group is not on the U.S. list of terrorist groups yet. <laughs> well, in 2009, however, a federal judge said in the ruling unsealed a year later that CAIR was tied to Hamas, an Islam uh, Islamist group that controls Gaza, which is on the U.S. terror list. The government has produced ample evidence to establish associations uh, to of the CAIR AIR and other groups with Hamas. U.S. District Court Judge George Solis said in his July 1, 2009 ruling. Helen Ann told HTLA Network in an interview that so far the gun shop has experienced a huge outpouring of support from the public in response to the Zimmerman print. Helen Ang was not sure how many prints had sold, but said the number right now is fewer than 20. And the, uh, the huge outpouring of support from the American public... Yes. Uh, why, why is that a newsworthy shocker? Huh? <laughs> you know, all, all of us uh, hard-working Americans here. Yes. And, <laughs> well, why the hell? And, 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 and the CAIR thing. Yes. You know, the, the, the CARE. I guess it's the CARE Bear Stare Islamic group. I don't know. <laughs> you know, why, why are they even allowed to be operating in this country with ties to Hamas? Yes. <laughs> You know, if I had ties to Hamas, I'd be sitting my little ass down in Guantanamo. <laughs> uh, they get crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Is the, is, oh, is, the, is That's what the Muslim thing is, isn't it? That's, <laughs> that's what someone told those extremists aren't really extremists. They're, they're just sick and tired of not being loved. <laughs> okay. He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Uh, Right. Well, I'm I'm not going to give it to him. Don't look yeah. at me. What the hell are you talking about? Moving on today, uh, we uh, we got an interesting kind of case about uh, a rape trial that's going on that's targeting elite prep schools. Salute. Yes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. If you want to know who the rapist is, look who's saluting. 
Well, the sexual proclivities of students at the prestigious New England Prep School are drawing scrutiny at a former student's rape trial that opened today in Concord, New Hampshire. Owen Labrie, 19, was within days of graduation from St. Paul's School in May of 2014 when prosecutors say he lured a 15-year-old freshman to a secluded room on campus and raped her. <laughs> Both sides have claimed that the encounter was part of a senior salute ritual, allegedly involving seniors uh, scoring sexual conquests prior to graduation. Well, as John Kerry would say, nothing new here. Let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Prosecutor Catherine Ruffell said that the tradition meant different things to different students and that the victim expected some intimacy but instead was Raped. <laughs> well, the defense lawyer, Jay Carney, says the teens had consenting sexual contact, but not sex when they met in a secluded room on campus. In the next few days, you're going to hear and see a lot about St. Paul's School, Ruffel told the jury in her opening statements today. But keep in mind, it really comes down to the defendant, how he made a plan and executed that plan to... Rape her. <laughs> Carney told the jury that the case is about two high school kids and the experiences they have growing up. Everything including the confusion, the impressions, the retroactive view in hindsight about what happened. Both are expected to testify in the case. The case has stunned the administration and alums of the 159-year-old school that claims Secretary of State John Kerry... Former FBI Director Robert Mueller and Pulitzer Prize-winning Doonesbury cartoonist Gary Trudeau among its graduates. Labrie from Turnbridge, Vermont, had been set to enroll at Harvard in the fall of 2014. Yes, Harvard. It's good to see the rapists are going to Harvard, man. Well, the school rector, Mike, Michael Hirschfield, a 1985 alumni, posted a statement on the school's website warning that information about behaviors at the school that could come out at the trial are allegations and not proven facts. We will move past this school and community stronger, united and committed, as always, to ensuring student safety and well-being, the statement said. Allegations about our culture are not emblematic of our school or our values, our rules or the people that represent our student body alumni who are all future senators of the United States. <laughs> well, come on. Everybody knows that the senators don't rape anybody. Yes. <laughs> no, it's just the president. Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you going to do when you live in that shoe? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. Always when, always with a female is having a relationship, married or single. Yeah. It's always better that they do the leaving. <laughs> if you do the leaving, it keeps <laughs> like that lingering thing. You know what I mean? Ah, uh, yes, and we certainly do not want to linger. Uh, that's yeah. that, that's a that's a for sure thing there. Louis. I've been on enough radio shows. <laughs> To know that in the middle of an answer, yeah, yeah. the guy is like checking the boards yeah, and yeah. looking over notes right. and well. talking to other people. That's yes. Right. <laughs> See, yeah. now yeah. you're impressed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting in your apartment, likely nude. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, so I, could, I could see you feel very <laughs> uncomfortable talking. <laughs> 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 now there was another time you you were when um I I know you you're very secretive about your drug problem. Uh well to be totally uh, and completely auto, uh, you know authentic and 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 truthful with you and the rest of the staff in earshot of this broadcast the workers that are in here and uh well indeed everybody else including Jenny McCartney's dog. <laughs> And, of course, don't forget the millions of listeners. Yes. Yeah, I, right. Um, I, I would have to say that I I, I, I was. Yeah. 
but of course, now that you've brought it up, um, yes. <laughs> Well, it really doesn't matter anymore, so go ahead, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about uh how about you do something bloody useful and productive, you little jerk? Huh? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you uh give us a little of that Jay Leno baby? Come on, yeah. rent somewhere that you want for dick. Uh, can you show it to me? <laughs> yeah. What about the Seinfeld? Hey, hey. I see a dick. There you go. <laughs> There it is. A right, crazy, crazy little man. Uh, yes. I don't know what the hell to do with you. Break for a commercial. Well, we could. Yeah. We could. Actually, we're about seven minutes out, so you're going to have to stretch it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak, you don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Really? Is, is that? Yeah? You think so, huh? No, no, <laughs> oh, no! I don't. <laughs> okay, well there you go. The um, music is fantastic. Yeah. Oh, you gotta hear it. All right, hang on. <laughs> oh yeah, baby! <laughs> Come on, two times. Swing around. There you go. That, uh... <laughs> uh-huh. But, uh... Ho! Did you like that, Louie? Yeah? <laughs> that, uh... The that music movie? is yeah. fantastic. Is that what you're talking about? Oh, you gotta hear it. How about this? <laughs> That's right, babies. HTLA or Radio 1, New York's best rock. We're bringing you the dirty backdoor tunes. Yeah. <laughs> I just had to do that. You know, yes. I just got to do something. Uh, sometimes you just have to, you know, press a button and hold on to your butt. Uh, that's what you got to do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, so uh, getting back to what the hell I was talking about, uh, uh, my drug problem. Yes. Yes. Um, well, and actually, uh, my cousin Tony. Uh, yes. I don't know if he's listening or is on today. I know, I know Sonia is, but. Uh, yes. Uh, man, he and I have got some bloody stories. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, remember this uh, one time, one for the boys. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, he and I, I guess, I don't know, we were like 21, 22, something like that. Yes. And uh, it was summertime. We were cruising the beaches looking for pussy. And, uh, well, you know, if there's two dumb Canadians who are going to wander into a biker gang, <laughs> yes, of course, that would be me and Tony. Yeah. So we walk into this biker gang. They're, they're down on the beach, and uh, yes. you know they're they're all sitting there around this campfire in broad daylight. Uh, you know, with with tons of booze. Like, yes. you know, it was, it's like Tony and I were were, were like bloodhounds for the booze. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so we're out there. We're looking for women. We're looking for booze. We're looking for anything we can get our hands on. Yeah. Right? And uh, we come across like there must have been twenty of the mothers. <laughs> And, uh, they're, 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 you know, we walk and buy them. We're, we're trying to be all, you know, Canadian and stuff. Yes. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh, we're just two young Canadian white boys that don't know anything. Yeah. Don't, uh... Please, please don't fuck us. Please, please don't. Oh, yeah. No, no, you laugh, but these guys were big. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Sons of Anarchy look like, oh, I don't know, the Muppets compared to these guys, you know? <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, we're walking by them, and they, and, they, and they call us over. Yes. And, you know, Tony and I do what every red-blooded Canadian boy would do in that situation and pooed our pants, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, boys, come on over here. <laughs> you know. So so whatever we we go over to them and uh, yes. they're handing us beer and shit. Yes, it's uh, like damn. Okay, baby, let's do that, motherfucker. Yeah. 
Oh my God, he's becoming black. I like it. Do a little rap. <laughs> I'm doing a motherfucking rap with the bikers. Yes. <laughs> And so anyway, we sit down with them, and, and, and you know, next thing you know, it's it's like seven hours later. <laughs> you know, the, the sun has gone down, the fire has gotten up to like 20 feet tall, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so so there we are, we're, we're at the beach, and we're drinking with the bikers. We're getting kind of loaded at this point in time, and, and you know, the, the head biker dude, um, it was the, uh, who the hell was it? Satan's Choice, I think it was? Yeah. Yes. Satan's Choice. Yeah, they're out of Toronto, I think. I don't know what... Oh, yes, I do know what they were doing in Victoria. They were they were there to kill one of their own. Yes, that's what <laughs> but as far as the RCMP and I are concerned, we don't know nothing. Yes. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, they, they start talking about one for the boys, one for the boys. Yes. And, and, and Tony and I are like, what the fuck are they... And, and they're pouring their beer and their hard liquor and stuff in the sand. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, stupid me that's got to know everything. I'm like, what? Well, what is that for? What do you mean, one for the boys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and the guy's like, well, you know, it's for all our fallen buddies. Yes. You know? <laughs> this is for Jimmy up in uh, Kingston. <laughs> this is uh, Luis down in uh, Young Street. <laughs> you know, and... <laughs> And they're listing off all the guys who have died. Yes. <laughs> and pouring huge amounts of booze into the sand. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, all Tony and I can think of is, is you know, we're, we're just as sad as they are. Yes. But it's it's not sad for their fallen brethren. It's, it's all the lost booze. <laughs> yeah. It's about, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move yeah, on. Okay, fine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Whatever, I, you know, it's it's my new thing. You know, yes. I, I like to to throw in a personal story. You know, something that means something to me for Christ's sake. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, throw it. Throw in a little personal story into the coffee and cigarettes mix, and and you know, see how many grinds are at the bottom. You know, <laughs> that's all. <laughs> and I'm I'm freaking sad now because Leanne Thomas left in the middle of the story. Yes. <laughs> So now I'm thinking nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, so that's fine. I can get back at them. Uh, Gilbert, uh, give us that uh, Jewish canter uh, done uh, so graciously as Cary Grant. Hey, you two jokes. Hey, you. Cary Grant uh, <laughs> as a canter. Hey, you two jokes. Hey, you. Mr. Goy. Uh, <laughs> Oh, God. Well, thank you. Thank you for that very much. Yes. That was, that was a great way to end my beach biker story. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on today, we do have to move on, and it is the hour of six. Yes, yes it is. We've actually stretched that nine minutes with absolutely nothing. <laughs> uh, we've done it. We've done it. I feel all, uh, I don't know, accomplished and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So now we can uh, go on to our second commercial break, but oh, oh no, oh no. Yes. No, 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 no. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, Kissy Springer in the in the booth there. Yes. She's saying, you're not going for a break until you do Frankie with the weather. <laughs> And I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm signaling her with my eyebrows. <laughs> you know, do we? This is something that we don't want to do today. You know, the the Frankie Fun and Games thing was was good a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's it's not so not so great anymore. Yeah. Let, let's, you know, uh, now we got Stacy Watts back. Let's <laughs> let's get uh, let's get her with our our weather or masturbating or something. <laughs> You know. That's the famous story about Jerry Lee Lewis. You heard that story, haven't you? Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right, fine. Well, I don't care. I'm taking off my headphones, though. Yes. Um, I'm not listening. Yes. <laughs> so there you go, listeners. Uh, if you're out there, uh, you know, if if the host of the show isn't actually listening, yeah, you probably shouldn't, too. <laughs> 
course, update from Phil DeYoung. Grand Rapids is up to 79 degrees right now and still cloudy. Yeah. <laughs> of course, here in Central Park, 84 degrees and a little bit of hazy cloud over the sun, but it's, it's still nice and hot. And, uh, well, I guess now without further ado, we have to go to Frankie McDonald uh, with your weather from possibly three years ago. <laughs> yes. This is Frankie McDonald with my old team station live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Major storm is headed towards Houston, Texas on Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. It's going to bring up to 50 plus millimeters of rain, especially on Tuesday evening. It's going to bring a lot of flooding in the windy conditions. It's going to rain sideways and wind drift rain, sense of tropical disturbances. Moving northward to the Gulf of Mexico, that's going to bring a ton of freight in Houston, Texas, Galveston, Texas, and the surrounding communities as well. It's going to bring a lot of freight. It's going to bring windy conditions, and the sewers will back up in the streets. It's going to bring a lot of heavy rain in Houston, Texas, and the surrounding areas on. And the heavy rain will continue on to Wednesday, June 17th, 2015 in Houston, Texas yeah. and Galveston, Texas. And Tuesday, June 16th, 2015 will not be a good day to do your outdoor activities because what? it's going to be a lot of rain. <laughs> I want people in Houston, Texas to clean out the storm drains before... A major storm with a lot of rain to hit Houston, Texas on Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. Especially during evening hours, it's going to bring a lot of rain. Windy conditions and sideways rain in Houston, Texas on Tuesday, June 16th, 2015. Into Wednesday, June 17th, 2015. Will not be a good day to, day to head to the beach and go swimming in. Galveston, Texas, got says it. it's going to be a uh, lot of rain in we, we got Houston, yeah. Texas on Tuesday, June 16, 2015, 2015, which is 6 to 10 inches of rain as well. Big boy, Houston, Texas, big prepared. Have your rubber boots ready for rain, ankles, ready for rain, ankles, ready. Suits, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you go for a walk, wear your rain gear, wear your rubber boots, wear your ankles to keep you dry. Coke, Pepsi. <laughs> Don't walk through the puddles. Avoid the puddles when you go for a walk. Order your pizzas, order your Chinese food. Buy cases of Pepsi, buy cases of Coke. Have your iPads charged, have your iPods charged, have your cell phones charged, have your laptops charged, have your tablets charged, oh. have your 3G and 4G ready. <laughs> when you drive the car, don't drive to the post. <laughs> Avoid the post when you drive the car. Since it's going to be a lot of flood in Houston, Texas. On Tuesday, June 16, 2015, into Wednesday, June 17, 2015. Have your flashlights ready. Have your candles ready. Have yeah. your crank up ready, ready. Have your extra batteries ready. And have your bottled water ready as well. Okay. Since thanks. it's going to be a lot of fun in Houston, Texas on Tuesday, June 16, 2015. 15, 15 yeah. into Wednesday, June 17, 2015. If everybody lives in the Houston, Texas, be prepared for a major storm on Tuesday, we, June 16, 2015. We got Best of luck, yes. <laughs> people in Houston, Texas, be prepared for Okay. major <laughs> storm on Tuesday, June 16, 2015, especially during evening hours. Thank you. Stay dry and be safe. Take care. <laughs> He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, I know. You got you to dispense more love from yourself. All these people are, are hurting here. <laughs> I don't need to dispense nothing, buddy. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah, I know Phil DeYoung in the live chat room, of course, he's saying, well, at least it's not Guam. <laughs> yeah. That was a mistake on my part. Oh, did you think it was Guam? You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's yeah. Louis yeah. Lawler. <laughs> of course. We, we've got that. Don't you worry. Uh, we, we, we've got you covered, Louis. Okay, now. Oh, yes, now. Kissy Springer, the one and only HTLA's second token black person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, she's giving me that now famous two thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> I can actually go for a commercial, but uh, don't run away anywhere because we got a whole lot more show uh, coming back in two. 
We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread, then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the but best the worst part was the shower. My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain defined that whole vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Let's do a brand new day. Let's step away from the bland and let the color fly. Let's get to the one store with more number one choices and match this or this without using too much of this. Then let's crack open a can and get to it. Paint? No. Let's do POW. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Glidden Duo starts at a new lower price of $25.46 a gallon. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. What the f***? Well, there you go. I'm ready. Well, that's what she said. That's right. She's ready all the... Uh, Gilbert, why don't you do something useful? Shout out those social media links for HTLA. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, on Twitter, and on Instagram. What, that's it? Okay. Well, you know, I just uh, wonder, do they keep uh, making such a big deal about it? Yes. Oh, you got to get the social media links out. You got to get the social yes. media links out. Oh, <laughs> Hey, if I mentioned you got to get the social media links out. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, you, Louie? What did you do this weekend? I nearly got kicked out of a theater. I, worked, I can't remember what I saw about two weeks ago because I was booing and screaming. Yeah, uh, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. 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 Well, just don't carry a gun or grenades. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. T would be proud of you. I know. I believe you said that uh, earlier in this broadcast. Yeah. 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 You would have loved the guy. He never drank, never smoked, did drugs, nothing. He had only one obsession, and that was the women. <laughs> he, just, he just pitied the fool. And, yeah. <laughs> if uh, you think that you were clever with women, he wouldn't stand a candle with this guy. No. Or Muhammad Ali was another one with women. I did two films with him. Yeah. Uh, he, he would walk into, we were doing a, a big boxy movie uh, uh, with two or three hundred people in the stand. And he walked in and uh, had uh, beside him stood his uh, macho honcho, and those were all the Muslims. So they had those little thin ties and suits. Yeah. yeah. And he would point <laughs> at the female. And he went and got him and gave him a note. And every 20 or 30 minutes, they would go into his dressing room. But they were only talking about negotiations, I'm sure. Right? Oh, yeah. It's all about the business, yeah. It's all about <laughs> the business, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's right. It is all about the business, and we're all about the business here. You got to tune to HTLA or Radio One, New York's best talk. Get on over to New York's best talk dot com, will you? If the uh, CEO doesn't see the numbers going up, my ass is toast. <laughs> uh, and 
And, uh, of course, we've uh, arranged a, a fine little chat room for you on the show page as well. Yes, you don't have to be a Spreaker superstar. Yes. <laughs> no. no, you can come and be an HTLA hermaphrodite. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's the, it's the only thing I could think of w- with H. I yes. Mean, I don't know. I don't know. Which which uh, woman are you married to or living with now? Uh, the the incredible, uh, the vivacious, tasty, dripping, wet, sloppy. Uh, <laughs> the one, the only uh, HTLA CEO herself. Yes. yes. <laughs> I guess maybe that's why I get away with so much shit around here. Right? <laughs> Just uh, you know, nail her good every night. Yes, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all good again the next day. Yeah. <laughs> yes, welcome back to your coffee and cigarettes, your Tuesday espresso for Tuesday, the eighteenth of August, twenty fifteen. Eighty four degrees, still Central Park, I believe. Seventy nine, still in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Phil DeYoung, for filling in for Stacy Stacks Watts. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, she was away on her trip. Now I believe she's back. Yes. And, uh, well, she's looking for... Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's, she's looking for too much fun. Let's put it that way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> actually, I think she's probably looking for something that actually could get me fired. Yeah. That's okay. I I invite change. Yes. Yes, I, I do. Yes, I, it's, it's good to change. I mean, you don't get any personal growth without change. Yes. Yeah. No, Frank and I were talking that your mother was in a movie. Uh, yes, Bride of Frankenstein. We've covered it. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know how to spell my last name on the check, right? It's Louis Lawless. Uh, would, would somebody just pay the man so you shut up? Somebody. <laughs> Somebody. I don't. I don't even care really who at this point. Just somebody give him some bloody money and yeah. <laughs> call it a day. Power tends <clears throat> to corrupt. Yeah. Absolute power corrupts. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do you got anything that we don't know? <laughs> do you get, yeah. Maybe a, a grand old sage advisory or something. That's the famous story about Jerry Lee Lewis. You heard that story, haven't you? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sitting behind his desk at Paramount, uh, talking with big executives and, and TV people. And all of a sudden, the chick pops up underneath, wipes off her mouth, and walks out the door. <laughs> and Jerry doesn't have an eye. <laughs> uh, got, got, uh, you got, got anything else? <laughs> you got, yeah? All right, gang, well, we're going to move on now. Uh, lots of stuff to move on to in the old stories here on your Tuesday Espresso. And, uh, well, of course, not the least of it would be Donald Trump news. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, no, not stupid, boring, oh, he's doing jury duty shit. (laughs) Well, much of the Trump immigration plan, apparently, is not that radical, says the GOP, despite criticism from some GOP presidential contenders this week of Donald Trump's immigration plan. The six-page proposal is actually a collection of what many Republicans have already been pushing on the campaign trail. Dumbasses. (laughs) Dumbasses. <laughs> well, his call to scale back and reform the legal immigration system to a better protect American workers, Wisconsin Governor Luke Scott Walker. <laughs> I am your father. Yes. <laughs> And former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum have been arguing that strategy for months. Trump's plan to seek out and deport immigrants who enter the country illegally but overstay their visas, that's one of the six points in former Florida Governor Jeb Bush's immigration plan also. His goals of securing the border, punishing uh, sanctuary cities in the U.S., and expanding an employer's ability to check the immigration status of new hires. Virtually all of the GOP field agrees. There's absolutely nothing new or radical about Trump's plan, says Bob Dane of the Federal uh, Federation for American Immigration Reform, a group that opposes illegal immigration. What makes Trump's plan unique and what prompted Dane to call it the, quote, American Workers' Bill of Rights is that Trump is the first candidate to em- embrace virtually the entire spectrum of ideas 
from immigration hardliners. The plan is a consolidation of different approaches, long touted by immigration think tanks and members of Congress, such as Senator Jeff Sessions, a Republican from Alabama. He could have put this together over a weekend with a couple of smart people and an Internet connection, says Mark Kilcoran, executive director of the Center for Immigration Studies, which has cited in Trump's proposal, quote, and the thing is, any of the other candidates would have done that, too. They dropped the ball by not doing something like this weeks ago. Well, while Dane and Kilcoran are thrilled to see many of their proposals taking center stage, others say the rest of the GOP field has steered clear of such an approach for a very good reason. Over the course of the 2012 Republican primaries, Mitt Romney was pushed so far to the right that he ended up embracing the idea of making life so difficult for underdocumented immigrants that they would choose to (laughs) self-deport. Yes, well, that helped him lock up the Republican nomination. It resulted in Romney garnering just 27% of the Hispanic vote in his loss to President Obama. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Ali Nurani, executive director of the National Immigration Reform, which opposes Trump's plan, said the proposal could push Republicans back into that corner and lead to the same result. Donald Trump is the gift that keeps on giving for Democrats, Nurani said. Mitt Romney didn't move this far to the right. John McCain didn't move this far to the right, and they didn't win. Now it's like Trump is saying, quote, I have to become even more extremists if I want to win, praise Allah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, even some groups that oppose illegal immigration have offered critiques. While it's not spelled out in his policy paper, Trump said uh, on Meet the Press on Sunday that he would deport all 11 million undocumented immigrants from the U.S., He did go beyond Numbers USA there. Well, yes, says Roy Beck, executive director of the group that has helped sink congressional efforts to grant legal status to undocumented immigrants for decades. Dane said he's concerned about Trump's plans as it might raise tariffs on Mexican imports as a way to prompt them to build a secure border wall. That could start a trade war and might not be to our advantage, Dane said. If you disseminate Mexico's economy, you're, well, creating an incentive for northern immigration. Oh, yes, we don't want more Canadians here. No. (laughs) Well, even Trump's intense focus on the border wall is turning some groups off. The whole, well, fence fetish, I think, is the problem, Kikorin said. The bang for the buck is much greater in other areas that he identifies E-Verify, Immigration and Customs Enforcement Cooperation with Police. Exit tracking and foreign visitors as well. That's where we're really going to make progress if we devote to the effort, he says. Whatever comes of Trump's candidacy, immigration groups feel that he has already changed the conversation and forced other White House contenders to begin staking out detailed positions. They can go no longer throw out vague ideas of securing the border and protecting American workers, Kilcorin said. Now, at campaign events and in upcoming debates, they should be forced to answer each of the points Trump laid out and different policies he endorsed. Walker, for instance, expects, expressed his support for ending birthright citizenship following its inclusion in the Trump plan. This has the potential of pinning them down to some positions in a way that, say, Santorum's plan didn't because he's second, third-tier candidate, whereas Trump, well, he's already a TV star. (laughs) Kikorin said that when he puts something like this out, people have to respond. Or, as Dane put it, Trump's plan fills the vacuum that a lot of the other candidates are walking around aimlessly in. Except for Hillary Clinton, and the only difference there is... Yes. She's driving around them in her mystery machine. (laughs) I don't know. Why do we have to wait 16 months? Just put Trump in now. Yes. You know? (laughs) Just just get it out of the way. Get it done. I got lost. H-T-L-A. Oh, H-T-L-A. Right. What the hell is that? That's your uh, career going down there. That's uh, that's what that is. Well, moving on today, we got some Iran news. That's right. Uh, Apparently, death to America doesn't mean what you think. 
Uh, no, Tehran, Iran. Today, hardline Iranians continue to shout death to America at Friday prayers and political rallies as they have for, yes, decades. Even decades back to when they had 250, no, 279 American hostages in the <laughs> embassy. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't mean death to America. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Well, that chant is cited by conservative U.S. politicians as proof that Iran remains hostile and can't be trusted to implement nuclear accords. Iran, the U.S., and other world powers agreed last month in Vienna while we were all looking at the Confederate flag thingy. <laughs> That's right. When they uh, they pushed through their unprecedented unprecedented inspections of Iran's nuclear facilities in return for lifting sanctions that have badly damaged Iran's economy, the only problem with that agreement was that they said that they would give them thirty days notice before inspecting any one location. <laughs> Well, U.S. conservatives cast doubt on Iranian leaders' intentions when some chants, yes, certainly, death to America, we should take him at his word and we shouldn't put him on the path to a nuclear bomb. Yeah. <laughs> this, this from Senator Tom Cotton, a Republican of Arkansas, a leading opponent of the agreement. He said this about Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei. <laughs> But Iranians apparently have a different interpretation of the slogan. I guess it's like ISIS on the can of Coke. You know? <laughs> Maybe the official word from Coca-Cola is, well, you know, we put it on there not to promote ISIS, but to let them know that they could sit down with a U.S. serviceman in the desert and have a Coke and we wouldn't cut their heads off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's a different interpretation, clearly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Death to America expresses the anger many Iranians feel about U.S. policy toward Iran, says Fode Izadi, an assistant professor of world studies at the University of Tehran. Iranians remember that the U.S. overthrew the legitimate gover government of Mohammad Mazedeh in 1953, and supported dictator a dict a dictatorial <laughs> Shaw, who followed. The slogan means death to American foreign policy, says Izadi. Iranians have, well, you know, here, change your freaking chant then. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure death uh, to America... Yes. And uh, death to American foreign policy. Yes. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure those two in Islamic sand spider-ish, you know? <laughs> I, I'm pretty much sure that they sound just about the same, so yes. you could get away with it. It's yeah. still, you know, uh, yeah, no, you're, you're, you're an asshole. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, death to Amer American policy. Iranians have problems with the American government, not the American people. In fact, he said, Iranians are friendly to Americans when you walk around town and people see you're an American and everyone wants to take care of you. No, they're trying to strap a bomb to you. <laughs> Well, those two sharply different understandings of the chant parallel a wider disagreement between Iran and the U.S. over foreign policy in the Middle East. The U.S. sees Iran as an aggressive power supporting terrorism in the region. Iran calls the U.S. a superpower that threatens military attacks on Iran and its allies. Both are absolutely right. <laughs> Well, even if legislative bodies in the U.S. and Iran vote to accept the agreement, clashes in the region are likely to continue, according to numerous Iranian sources. If everything goes smooth, then it creates dynacism, out of which many things could happen, says Mustafa Zarani. <laughs> yes, and Mustafa is the director general of the Institute for Political and International Studies, a foreign ministry think tank. But that cooperation comes with a long list of caveats, of course. Izadi says Iranian leaders fundamentally distrust U.S. policy in the region, citing the Afghanistan war. Well, that that's terrorism. <laughs> the uh, previous occupation of Iraq and current U.S. support for Saudi Arabia's bombing of Yemen. 
These are serious mistakes, he said. Iran thinks that this part of the world is on fire because of U.S. foreign policy. No, it has nothing to do with our demands and having them met. <laughs> no. That's right, Iran is unlikely to change its support for Syria's Bashar Assad and the Lebanese group Hezbollah, whether or not sanctions are lifted. Some U.S. critics of the Vienna Accords claim ending sanctions could free up $150 billion in Iranian assets, which could then be used to fund Hezbollah and other Iranian allies. And, well, when you consider the... Uh, well, the, the track record of the American government. Yes. Uh, that's pretty much bang on. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would say that that's exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Iran's central bank leaders say Iran has an estimated $130 billion being held abroad due to sanctions, but it will be able to repatriate only about $29 billion because of previous agreements to purchase goods and pay for infrastructure projects. And, geez, let's be fair here. Yes. Uh, shouldn't they take the hit from 2008, too? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we had to suck dick. Yes. Come on. <laughs> No, we'll take that $29 billion or their $130 billion or whatever it is. We'll devalue it down to what it would have been uh, in uh, March there of 2008, which would have been, uh, what is it, carry the two, 49 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, their houses and property, we, we have to get them down to like 5000 bucks a, y a lot. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know. Oh, and then, we can, and then we can auction them off for tax bills. <laughs> And uh, yeah, Iran, you're looking at about twelve hundred eighty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, Iran has supported Hezbollah, of course, since its founding in the early 1980s. Izadi said that policy isn't going to change. Analysts point out two possible areas of U.S.-Iran co cooperation, being Syria and Iraq. But the prospects don't look good at the moment. Iran Foreign Minister Mohammad Zavid Zarif traveled to Lebanon and Syria recently to discuss Iran's peace plan, which would keep Assad in power pending peace talks with non-extremist rebels and internationally supervised elections. To date, the U.S. has expressed no interest whatsoever in that bullshit plan. <laughs> And the U.S. continues to fault Iran for backing Assad, while Iran blames the U.S. for allowing its allies, Saudi Arabia and Turkey, to arm extremist groups such as the Al-Qaeda-affiliated Nursa Front and the Islamic State. Isn't it funny how Iran knows that we funded our own terror? <laughs> power tends to corrupt. Absolute power yes. corrupts absolutely. Well, yeah. Okay, so the... <laughs> The U.S. closes its eyes to the actions of the Saudis, says Saeed Mohammed Mirandi, the assistant professor at the University of Tehran. Ultimately, there's going to be blowback. Well, why wouldn't we close the eyes to the actions of the Saudis? They're our allies. Do you got any? <laughs> well, in Iraq, the de facto alliance exists because both Iran and the U.S. are waging war against the Islamic State. As Zadi said, he doubts, however, that Iran will accept a formal alliance. No, 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 that would be too easy. <laughs> No, those filthy pantyhose-wearing imperialists will have to earn our love. Yes. <laughs> With pillars of holy fire in their cities each week. Well, Iranian leaders don't want to be seen as cooperating or collaborating with the U.S., says Azadi. The U.S. image is in part of, uh, of this, this part of the world is quite negative. The level of U.S.-Iran hostility has re been revealed when Abbas Aragani, the Iran's chief negotiator in Vienna, gave off the record, off the record talk uh, to the Islamic Republic of Iran broadcasting. The comments were briefly published online before being pulled down. People should not get the feeling that America is now our friend and that, uh, well, intimate, in, 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 in. <laughs> See, and enemies are our friend. <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, I, wow, I do not know what that word is. Yes. <laughs> no. no, and I'm Canadian, so you know I got good education. You know. <laughs> Well, it's definitely not the case, says Af 
our 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 frog chi a frog chi. <laughs> Yes, yes. Abbas Afrogchi. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely not the case. Our enemy against, or our enmity against the U.S. and their enmity towards us is not over. We have managed and solved just one bilateral issue. Uh, Agri- Ag- Agarichi? Yeah. Ag- Arag- Arag- Chi. There you go. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I am not Islamic. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Arag Chi said. <laughs> he said that other Iranian leaders are committed to implementing the Vienna Accords, according to Izadi and other experts. Uh, that, of course, irks Ruhula Hosanian, a conservative member of Iran's parliament and a leading opponent of the nuclear agreement. His views parallel those of American critics of the Accord, only in mirror image. Uh, Hosinian says that the Accords won't allow Iran to produce nuclear fuel and to run even one nuclear plant, and that they'll allow the U.S. to spy on Iran's military bases under the guise of inspections. I don't trust the United States myself, says Hosinian, and Supreme Leader Al Khamenei doesn't trust the U.S. either. <laughs> While Khomeini was not formally endorsed the Vienna Accords and is unlikely to do so until after the U.S. congressional vote in September, he has praised the nuclear accord negotiators. Hosinian and other conservatives plan to vote against the Vienna Accords in Parliament, saying Iran can survive U.S. sanctions. So, yeah. <laughs> Yes, we've shown that in worst-case scenario, we can manage the country during the years of sanctions, he said. The only way we have is resistance against world powers. An opinion poll shows that 57% of Iranians support the Vienna Accords and death to America. (laughs) And those Iranian militants will not stop chanting death to America anytime soon. There you go. So, so there, there's a story about uh, the multiple uh, meanings of death to America, and after all that, yes, it still means death to America. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, wow. Wow. That that was just a whole lot of writing and reading for nothing. Yes. You know. <laughs> well, moving on today. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. Did you know, uh, Gilbert? Uh, yes. There, there is actually two things wrong with Walmart. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's true. It says right here. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Forget about the people of a Walmart website. Yes, that website that shows some, well, shall we say, unflattering photos. <laughs> Of people shopping at the store, the most painful sight for investors is the stock. <laughs> uh, that's right. Suck on this. Yes. <laughs> that's right. Shares of the nation's biggest retailer are down at 19% this year, including a 3% drop to $69.67 a share Tuesday after the company reported a disappointing adjusted profit share of $1.08 that missed expectations by 3.6%. I think... Yes. Don't quote me, but I think this might have something to do with that uh, case that was on the show about two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, We reported about that guy, uh, well, banging his pig in the bathroom. (laughs) You know, he was, he was screwing his pig in the bathroom and got busted. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I think since then, nobody wants to go to Walmart. <laughs> well, I mean, think about it, Gilbert. You yes. know, you, 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 you're, you're in the store, you're, you're, you're doing your shopping, yeah. you know. They're playing the nice music. Yes. Right? And yeah, you, you're over by the sporting goods. You're looking at the shotguns. Yes. You know, damn, that's a nice shotgun. Yes. <laughs> no, no, honey, come here. Look, that's a damn nice shotgun. <laughs> and and look, honey, they only want half our welfare check for it. <laughs> that's right, two hundred nine dollars. 
Oh, Herbert, wait till uh, wait till the fifteenth when we get the child support. Yeah. I don't want to wait till the fifteenth. I want it now, now, now. <laughs> well, anyway, Herbert decides. You know, yes. oh, geez, I got that feeling down there. I gotta go to the bathroom. Yes. Nah. <laughs> All right. So, so he goes in the bathroom and he he drops his pants. Yes. And he sits down and he's sitting there and he's contemplating all about that shotgun. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Real nice, <laughs> and 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 then it hits him. Yes. Oh shit! Is this the stall that man did his pig in? <laughs> <laughs> well, the missing earning forecast for the second quarter in a row isn't the true problem facing the retailer, at least not in the eyes of the investors. Instead. There are two troubling financial developments that the company that investors are keying on. Number one is a declining return on their equity. Investors looking for a scorecard on management fixate on return on equity. The measure shows how much profit the company is driving from the money plowed into the business by stock owners. This measure of Walmart's performance has been steadily dropping the past three years since the first time animal sex occurred. <laughs> In a Walmart bathroom. <laughs> That's right. Well, the measure of Walmart's performance uh, with that drop, uh, of course, uh, falling to 23% in the fiscal year ended January 31st, 2013, and a further 19.8% in the past 12 months, says S&P, capital IQ. It's another way to see how the company isn't driving the profit out of the business that investors had come to expect in years past. Problem number two is anemic revenue growth. If there's a source of many Walmart woes, you know, it starts at the top line. Revenue inched up just 1.1% during the past 12 months, the lowest revenue growth at Walmart since the 12 months ended January 2010. And revenue growth has been steadily falling, dropping from 5.8% in fiscal 2012. Falling revenue growth creates problems, even as Walmart is actually holding the line in its core profit profitability. Walmart kept 24.9 cents on every dollar of revenue after paying direct costs, including merchandise, over the past 12 months. That's practically identical to the 25.3 cents on every dollar the company kept in the 12 months ended July 31st, 2011, says S&P Capital IQ. Overhead isn't the problem either. Walmart kept 3.3 cents of every dollar of revenue after paying continuing operations. That's about the same as in 2011 when Walmart kept 3.8% of every dollar from continuing operations. If there's good news, it's that these negatives are well known and baked into the stock price. Research firm New Constructs in Manhattan, which evaluates stocks based on their price compared to the present value of expected cash flow, rates the stock still in the attractive category. Many investors aren't convinced, yet analysis rates the stock a hold. On average, analysts do have an 18-month price target of $78.65 a share, through which would be a 13% upside if correct. But for now, investors are suffering, and they know exactly why. Boo-hoo! <laughs> yeah. oh. oh, you poor investors in your portfolios. We had a guy screwing a pig in the bathroom. <laughs> And, you know, don't come crying to me about your stock being down. Yes. Because, uh, well, that Farmer Joe sure wasn't. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, finally today, our, our final story on your Tuesday espresso, of course. <laughs> yes, we're, we're finally here. And it's all about, uh, well, it's college news. Yes. Yeah, it's about the University of Alabama. So sorority has been criticized for their uh, recruitment video. <laughs> Well, that's right. The 2015 academic year hasn't technically begun yet, but the members of the Alpha Phi sorority at the University of Alabama have still managed to start things off pretty freaking shabbily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. In their Alpha Phi 2015 recruitment video, traditionally used to highlight the 
positive aspects of a Greek organization. The group made up almost exclusively of white girls, many of them doing nothing but dance, jump around, and blow kisses and glitter. <laughs> Well, the video has been met with a wave of criticism from people who feel that the group appeared interested in highlighting very little but their own looks. <laughs> I, I'm not seeing a problem yet. I, I don't. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking. Just let's make damn sure we invite them to the parties. Yes. <laughs> Well, the video has been met with that wave of criticism. Yes, that's right. Alpha Pi delivered, deleted sorry, the video, which had over 15, uh, no, 1.5 million views on YouTube before it was taken down. But it has since been uploaded to YouTube by others, so thank God we can still see it. <laughs> Well, AL.com op-ed writer A.L. Bailey wrote, quote, Remember all those bikini-clad, sashaying, glitter-blowing, and spontaneous piggyback-riding days of college? Me either, but according to a new video, it's a whirlwind of glitter and girl-on-girl -girl piggyback action. <laughs> That's right, and the new University of Alabama's Alpha Phi house. No, it's not. A slick Playboy Playmate or Girls Gone Wild video. Yeah. <laughs> it's a parade of white girls and blonde hair. Is that really what the problem is? Yes. Is it because they're they're pretty white girls with blonde hair and not black and fat and mattering? <laughs> is that you know? Because I, I'm serious. If you're not black and fat and mattering, <laughs> you know. Oh, and you have to be unarmed, <laughs> right? If you're not all that, then you just ain't going nowhere, girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, he's becoming black. I like it. Do a little rap here, too. <sighs> well, coordinated clothing, bikinis and Daisy Dukes, glitter and kisses, bouncing bodies and boobies. <laughs> That's right. Euphoric hand-holding and hugging, gratuitous booty shots. Amen. <laughs> and, yes, matching aviator sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> It's also racially and aesthetically homogenous and forced, so hyper-feminine, so reductive and objectifying, so Stepford Wives. <laughs> he says it's also unempowering. Yes. I don't know, buddy. I haven't even seen the video, and I'm feeling pretty empowered. I, I, I'm, yeah. Let's get out there and do the rest of this work week and invite those girls to the party on Friday. Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, this video is not reflective of UA's expectations for student organizations to be responsible digital citizens, says Deborah Lane, the Associated Vice President for University Relations, saying in a statement today, It is important for student organizations to remember that what is posted on social media makes a difference today, tomorrow, and how they are viewed and perceived in the future. <laughs> Griffin Meyer, the University of Alabama student filmmaker who shot the recruitment video, told us that the shoot was not very organized and there was a lot of improvisation that led to shots with similar looking girls. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this visit video isn't for the politically sensitive adults who immediately associate a popsicle with sex. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor added, there is no drinking, no drugs, no nudity, damn it. Yes. It's kind of sad girls can't play fake football or be in a bikini without the judgment of the entire internet. Yeah. <laughs> well, he told The Hollywood Reporter that he was inspired by a University of Arizona recruitment video. The video featured scantily clad sorority women dancing and wrapping American flags around themselves. Yeehaw! <laughs> Talking, I want to go there. Yes. <laughs> well, a lot of sororities have been using that University of Arizona Theta recruitment video for inspiration because it looked so good and it was so successful, Meyer said. Meyer added that the Alpha Phi is much more diverse than the video depicted. Bailey relates the video to recent statements made by Donald Trump during and since the August 6 Republican debate. Quote, this video has a clear sales pitch, beauty, sexuality, and a specific look above all. 
They're selling themselves on looks alone. It's a commodity. Sadly, commodities don't lend to commands much respect. So who's buying what they're selling, Bailey asks. Well, men from Donald Trump on down to fraternity pledges are buying it over and over and over (laughs) and over. Well, some on YouTube didn't understand the uproar. However, a manufactured crisis wrote one commentator likewise on Twitter. Many women who said that they were in sororities said they saw nothing wrong with the recruitment video. Initial efforts to reach Alpha Phi by HTLA at the local and national level have proved absolutely unsuccessful. They're too effing busy partying. (laughs) Well... There we go. That's a that's a wrap. That's a show. I want to thank the one, the only Louis Lawless for joining us here live uh, for Mill Bay Studios. I nearly got kicked out of a theater. I, went, I can't remember what I saw about two weeks yeah. ago because yeah. I was booing and screaming. Okay, good. You keep on doing that. <laughs> I want to thank the one, the only Gilbert Gottfried for being here as always. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. Oh man. <laughs> You say that with such conviction. Yes. I, uh, I almost almost believe it. There you go. Also a reminder, uh, get yourself over to New York's Best Talk.com. That's right, HTLA Radio 1, New York's Best Talk, right there for you live online. Get in the chat room, uh, listen to the shows. There's several hundred thousand million of them. <laughs> And shout-outs and thank-yous to, of course, uh, number one and two, Sonia and Tony Adrian. Yes, uh, you know who you are. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Blade! (laughs) Also, shout-outs, thank-yous, and salutations to the one, the only, Phil DeYoung, uh, Sharon Chesley, Devlon Crawford, Stacey Watts. Yes. (laughs) And yes, Stacey, we will be casting you in the next Alpha 5 video. Yeah. (laughs) And the rest of you out there, Bjorn Erickson, uh, God, the list goes on. I, I've got so many, I can't mention them all. Have yourselves a great Tuesday night. We'll catch you here tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, for your Wednesday grinder. Have a great night. Radio.